I'm Tom, coming to you from the International Institute for the Advancement of Sourdough Science and Research of Cleveland, Ohio, also known as my kitchen. Thank you for selecting this video. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm kind of a gadget freak. I have a collection of about 100 thermometers in my drawer here that I featured in other videos. And since I started making sourdough bread, I've been obsessed with controlling the dough temperature because when you control the dough temperature, that really helps you control your timing. And if you control your timing, it helps you fit sourdough baking into a busy schedule so you can make more bread. Now, I recently published two videos on this topic. The first one, post-pandemic sourdough for busy people, where I show how if you can reduce your dough temperature, you can stretch out your bulk fermentation time to fit your bulk fermentation into a busy working person's schedule. Another video that I recently made is two-stage bulk fermentation, where I show how if you warm up your dough at the beginning of bulk fermentation and then move it into the refrigerator, you can basically do that bulk fermentation step on autopilot, again, to fit into busy working people's schedules. So all these techniques rely on controlling your dough temperature, because if you control your dough temperature, you control time. And if you control time, you can make more sourdough bread. You can fit it into a busy schedule. So over the last couple of years, I have amassed a massive collection of sourdough temperature control devices. That's what I'm going to show you in today's video. This is the first installment of a new series called the Sourdough Gadget Guru. And today we are going to look at a lot of gadgets. So buckle up. This is going to be a good one. Now, some people will ask, why do I need to control the temperature of my starter or my dough? Does it really make better bread? The purpose of all these temperature control units isn't really about improving the quality of your bread. You can make fantastic sourdough at almost any temperature. By controlling your temperature, you're controlling time. You're fitting sourdough baking into your schedule. So many people learned to bake sourdough during the pandemic and they had to quit when they went back to work. This is how you get back in the sourdough game. These units are little sourdough time machines. They speed up or slow down your process so you can fit it into your schedule. Now, this is the point in the video where people will turn off the video, they'll angrily go to the comments and they'll say, this is ridiculous. People have been making sourdough bread for a thousand years and they didn't need all this technology. That is true. But the other thing that they weren't doing a thousand years ago, they weren't working 50 hours a week and commuting an hour each way to work. They weren't taking their kids to soccer practice and piano lessons when they got home for work. They weren't taking their cat to the vet and they weren't caring for an elderly parent in another city. I don't think they were doing any of those things a thousand years ago. So the people who say that we can make sourdough using stone tools, you can respectfully keep your opinion to yourself. If these tools help you control your schedule so you can make sourdough bread, you don't have to apologize to anybody, spend the money, buy the technology, and make more sourdough. Sorry, I got a little wound up there. I'm a little passionate about this topic. Now, when we talk about controlling temperature in sourdough, there are generally two things you're trying to control, your dough temperature and your starter temperature. I'm going to focus mostly on controlling your dough temperature. I'll come back later in the video and talk about controlling your starter temperature in more detail. Now, if you're making sourdough, there are typically two general ways that people do it. One is warm bulk fermentation. That's the classic Chad Robertson tartine method where you're bulk fermenting your dough at 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. The other method are the cool overnight versions where you're typically bulk fermenting your dough in the evening in a cool kitchen at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius or lower. Those are kind of the two extremes. The middle is kind of no man's land where it's too cool for the, for the, the tartine method and it's too warm for the overnight method because your dough will overproof overnight. So in this video, I'm going to show you the traditional warm proofers, and I'm going to show you some new products that have come out using a new technology that allow you to either warm or cool your dough. So the first warmer we'll talk about is the Broden Taylor sourdough proofer. This product's been around for a number of years. This will warm your dough. Now, before I acquired this proofer, I used to keep my dough warm in the oven with the light on. That's a very inexpensive, simple way to do it. You turn your heat off, put the light on, put your dough into your oven. I did that for many years. Then a friend of mine bought this for me as a gift. I never turned back. This is a fantastic product. What this does is it warms your dough. 
There's a thermostat on the side. You dial in what temperature you wanna warm your dough up to, and you put your dough in here. I use this all the time for the tartine method, that warm bulk fermentation method, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 degrees Celsius. It's fantastic for that recipe. The other thing I love about this is I don't like bulky kitchen appliances, and this looks a little bulky. Look at this, folds down. You can put this under your cabinet, you barely know it's there. This is a fantastic design. It warms up quickly, it keeps your dough at a constant temperature. There's a little humidity tray in here. If you add a little bit of water into the humidity tray, it keeps the temperature even around your dough. And this runs completely silently. There are no fans, there's nothing in here. This is a great product, but it's a little bulky when it's set up. So people take these out when they're ready for making sourdough, then they put them away. You generally don't keep these on your counter, at least I don't. Now, some people also use this for keeping their starters warm. You can use this in the winter. Again, it's a fantastic tool if you have a cold kitchen and your starter gets very sluggish in a cold kitchen, you can keep your starter in here as well. Now, this unit has a 25 liter capacity. That's a lot of space. I can put my largest bowls in here. This is great if you're doing bulk fermentation where you're doing stretching and folding during the process because you can bulk ferment your dough in the bowl. You can do the stretch and folds here. You can put it back in here. I use these tall measuring vessels in here occasionally. This is great for a double batch. It has milliliter markers on it. I use that for the tartine method. And you can stack different size vessels and different size bowls in here. There's also a shelf you can put in here to build up two stacks of bowls. Great unit, great capacity. Now the only downside of this proofer, it only warms the dough. This is great in the winter. I love it. Keeps my dough warm. But in the summer, if I'm trying to do overnight fermentation in the summer, this does me no good because it's a warmer. My kitchen's too warm for my dough to bulk ferment overnight because it'll overproof if I don't run my air conditioning in my kitchen all night. So this is a fantastic warmer, but not a dough cooler. So why do I need to keep my dough cooler than room temperature? It's just another way to do the bulk fermentation. You can do the warm version. It takes about six hours. If I don't have six hours to tend the dough. I wanna do it overnight. In the winter, I'll mix my dough at night, I'll bulk ferment it on my countertop overnight because my kitchen temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius or lower every night during the winter. That's a fantastic temperature to stretch out your bulk fermentation time, say for eight to 12 hours. In the summer, I don't run the air conditioning in my kitchen all night, so I can't do that overnight method in the summer. I'd love to be able to do that. So in the summer of 2021, after I'd used this device for a little while, summer rolled around and I wasn't using my proofer because it only keeps my dough warm. And I thought, why don't we have a device like this that warms and cools? Then I can use this to keep my dough warm in the winter and I could use it to keep my dough cool in the summer. There's nothing like that on the market, or at least there wasn't in 2021. So what do we do here at the Institute when we're presented with a challenging problem? I opened the Peltier Thermoelectric Heating and Cooling Lab, and I built a version of this that could heat or cool your dough in the summer of 2021. So I basically created a prototype of a refrigerator and an oven in the same unit, and the technology that makes that possible is this little chip called a Peltier Thermoelectric Cooling Chip. This is the future of sourdough baking for home bakers. This product can basically create a low-cost device that heats and cools. So I was building this contraption in the lab, this thermostatically controlled heating and cooling device for sourdough bread. And around the 4th of July, my brother-in-law Ed came to visit and Ed went down to Walmart to buy a six pack of beer and he came back with a little mini fridge that looked kind of like this. He got one of these at Walmart for less than $20 and it's basically a little refrigerator that you could put a six pack of beer in. But the interesting thing is when somebody was building this little fridge, they used this Peltier device for the refrigeration. And the cool thing about this is if you reverse the polarity of this chip, it changes from a cooler into a heater. So somebody said, hey, let's build a little mini fridge. And then some engineer said, if we spend five cents and put a little switch on the back of this, you can make this either a cooler or a warmer. So now you can buy these little mini fridges with the switch on the back that'll cool your beer or they'll warm up your, I don't know, Egg McMuffin or Taco Bell 
if you want to do that. So it's basically a heater and a cooler. And I saw this and I'm like, oh my God, this is what I've just been building. The only problem is that this doesn't have a thermostat controller on it. So I can't tell it what temperature I need. That's really important for sourdough fermentation is I need to specify the temperature. I just turn this on hot and it goes all the way to the hottest setting or I flip the switch to cool, it goes all the way to the coolest setting. So what did I do? Added a thermostat. Now you can buy one of these for about 20 or $30. This is a warming or cooling thermostatic controller. It has a little thermostat probe. I drilled a hole in the top of my mini fridge. I put this down in here. I made myself a sourdough proofer. I can set it on a warm temperature or I can set it on a cold temperature. It worked perfectly. I featured this in my video, Post-Pandemic Sourdough for Busy People. And in that video, if you've seen it, I basically created fermentation tables that say, if you specify what time you're looking at to start mixing your dough in the evening and when you want to shape the dough the next day, you look up the time on that table and based on those tables, it'll tell you how much starter to use and what temperature you want to set your dough temperature to. And in the morning you wake up and your dough is perfectly fermented. This is the future of sourdough. You specify that overnight dough temperature to stretch out the time to fit your schedule. Now what you're seeing here is a total breakthrough in sourdough fermentation technology. A sourdough proofer that heats and cools with a thermostatic controller on it. But this is a little small, it's a little clumsy. You gotta drill a hole in your refrigerator to make this work. So I started to look for other options. And then I found this. IVYX Scientific Incubator, five liter capacity, warms or cools your dough, has the thermostat automatically built into the front there. This is a fantastic unit. It's a little larger than that other mini fridge. That mini fridge only holds one batch of dough. I can do a double batch of dough in here, a thousand gram flour weight recipe. I put my dough in here. I set my temperature to the temperature that I want. And then I walk away and I come back and my dough is perfectly proofed. But the challenge with these little mini fridges is I can't fit my fermentation buckets in here. I can't fit my bowls in here. So this is a challenge that needs to be solved. So the technology solved the warming and cooling, but now you need to figure out how to get a fermentation vessel that will fit in this fairly small capacity unit. So I took the inside measurements of this device and then I took a tape measure and I went to the craft store, the kitchen store, the container store, the hardware store, and I found some vessels that work perfectly. These will all be included on the website. Now, if you're using this vessel for warm bulk fermentation, like in the tartine method, where you're doing stretching and folding of the dough during that first three hours of the, the fermentation process, I try to find a low vessel. This is 2.3 liters. This is a food storage container. You can get your hands in here. It's a little tight, but you can get your hands in here to take the dough out, do the stretch and folds, and put it back in there. If you're doing cold fermentation, where you're just leaving the dough in the proofer overnight at a cool temperature and you're not doing stretch and folds, you can fit a larger capacity of dough in there. That's where I found this. This is actually an acrylic flour vase that I put these milliliter markers on. Look at this. I can fit two full-size batches of dough in here, a thousand grams of flour weight, and that dough can double overnight without exceeding the top of this. That's 3.2 liters of capacity. It's about the maximum you can fit in this unit. So when you're trying to find the right vessel to go with these units, obviously it needs to fit the inside dimensions, but then you also want to think about how much dough you're going to rise in here. The simple rule of thumb is the rule of three. If you take your flour weight in grams times three, that will tell you the volume in milliliters that you need for that dough to double in volume, assuming you're mixing it with 75% hydration and 20% starter. Very standard recipe. So, if I'm making a 500 gram flour weight recipe, 500 times three means that I need a 1.5 liter vessel for that dough to double during bulk fermentation. If I'm making a thousand gram recipe, a thousand times three tells me I need 3000 milliliters or three liter capacity for that dough to double in bulk fermentation. It's a simple rule that works all the time. You can also work backwards. So if I have a vessel here that says this is 3300 milliliters in capacity, 3,300 divided by three tells me I could mix up 1,100 grams of flour mix in this vessel if I wanted it to double in that vessel. So use that rule of three to find the right vessels. 
So how do I use this IVYX scientific incubator? I use this for warm and cold proofing. Warm proofing, the classic tartine method. I mix my dough, I put it in here, set the temperature 80 degrees Fahrenheit. My dough is already at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 degrees Celsius. I put it in here, I let it sit for 30 minutes at a time. I take it out, I do my stretch and folds. I put it back in and I wait till the dough rises to my target, rise in bulk fermentation. I take it out, the dough is perfectly bulk fermented. I also use this for cold fermentation overnight. So in the middle of the summer, my kitchen's 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 or 30 degrees Celsius. That's too warm for overnight bulk fermentation. And I wanna mix a double batch of dough. 1,000 grams of flour weight dough means I need a three liter vessel for it to double. I use my tall vessel, mix up the dough, put it in here, put the dough in here, set it for 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius. I check my timetables from the post-pandemic method. It tells me that dough will be ris risen in 11 and a half hours. I set the temperature to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius. I go to bed. I wake up 11 and a half hours. I take the dough out. It's perfectly risen, perfectly fermented. So when I'm not using this unit for bulk fermentation, you know what else I do? Keep my starter in here. Keeps it warm in the winter, keeps it cool in the summer. Similar to the way we control our dough temperature to control the speed of the rise, you do the same thing with your starter. If I leave my starter on the counter in the middle of the summer, I have to feed it two or three times a day. It's, it's rising so quickly. I put it in here, tell it to chill out, set my temperature at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius. I feed that in the morning. It slows it down so I don't have to feed it multiple times per day. You can even drop it really low, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, and really stretch out your starter feeding cycle by keeping your starter at a cool temperature. Then when I'm getting ready to make my dough and I want to, want to build a leaven and I want to do it quickly, I'll mix up a batch of leaven. I'll jack the temperature up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees Celsius. I put my leaven in here, boom, it's ready to go in three, four hours. So as I said in the beginning, you control temperature, you control time, you make sourdough work on your schedule. Now with all these units, I'm super sensitive to noise because I like to keep this on my countertop in the kitchen. This is a perfect size for that. But all these devices that use the thermoelectric cooling chip, they need to have a fan running to cool the electronics. So this has a very quiet fan in the back, but with this unit, you'll also hear it clicking on and off. The fan doesn't run constantly. Once the temperature gets to the target set temperature, the fan will turn off and it'll sit silently until the temperature drops below the target. Then you'll hear the unit click on and the fan will run again until it gets up to the temperature. It'll click off, the fan turns off. Now with all these units, if you're planning to keep these on your countertop, just be aware that they will make some noise. I mean, if you have kids running around and dogs barking and the TV on, you won't even hear this thing. I mean, it's practically silent. But if you're really hypersensitive to fan or motor noises, I'd say check the return policy of these items. Buy one, get it in your house, see if it's the right size for you, turn the fan on, listen to it with your own ears. It's the best way. So I used this device for a while. I love this for single or double batches overnight. This is fantastic, but it's a little small. So I looked at some other options and IVYX Scientific has a big brother version of this. Here's the big brother, 25 liter capacity. This is a really large unit. You can put a lot of dough in here. It has these removable shelves. You know, I can put my large fermentation vessel on the bottom. I can put another bowl on the top or you could take that shelf out. And if you ferment your dough in those large Cambro containers that a lot of people use, check the exact dimensions of that. But I'm pretty certain that a six liter Cambro container can easily fit in here with some additional headroom on the top. Now this is a little bit bulky of a unit and it's a little tall, so I can't fit it on my countertop unless you think outside the box. Look what I just did here. I have a sourdough proofer on my countertop. I can keep my dough warm in the winter, cool in the summer. I can keep my starter in here. I can put things in here side by side. Look at that. I can bulk ferment dough. I can put my starter in here. I mean, that is not a bad profile for that unit. A couple other features about this unit. It has a humidity tray in the bottom. You can pour water in that tray in the bottom. And if you add humidity to any of these devices, it helps more evenly distribute the warm or cold air around your dough. And now lastly, this has a little bit of a loud fan on the back of it. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll turn it up towards the microphone. 
but this also has a mute switch on it, which doesn't actually turn the fan off, but it turns it down to such a slow speed. That it's almost silent. I mean, this is pointing directly at the microphone. If I turn it up like this, I can barely hear that running. I love that feature if you're going to leave this on your countertop. And lastly, you can fit bannetons in here, so you can use this as a cold proofer for final proofing. The cool thing about this, no pun intended, is you can set this temperature higher than your refrigerator temperature. I mean, when you cold ferment your dough in the refrigerator, it's going to get down to 39 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius. I could set this at 60 degrees, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, that'd be 16 Celsius or 10 Celsius. You can do your final proofing slightly faster than you would do it in the refrigerator, but not as fast as a countertop proof. Again, it just gives you tremendous flexibility when you can control your dough temperature, either for bulk fermentation or final proofing. So I've been using these two warm and cold proofers for a while with great success. I particularly like these for that cold proofing or cool overnight bulk fermentation. I strongly recommend you check out my video, Post Pandemic Sourdough for Busy People with the Low and Slow Method, where it gives you the charts to dial in the timing and the temperature of these devices so your dough is ready when you're ready. I think that is the future of sourdough baking for busy people. You're not going to be standing around your kitchen watching dough rise anymore. You're going to mix your dough at night, put it in one of these cold proofers, set the temperature, your dough will be ready when you come back from work and you're ready to move to the next step. Now, all kinds of companies are continuing to come out with new products. And literally just yesterday, I found another thermostatically controlled mini fridge that warms and cools that's the size in between these two a 15 liter version and a 20 liter version. So check the products list on my website. I'll continue to put new products out there. I think you're gonna to continue to see things coming out all the time. Now this is the Vivor 25 liter incubator. I showed this in two of my prior videos when I first received this product and I was evaluating it. But since that time, there's a feature in here that I really don't like. So what I'm recommending now is the IVYX incubator, which is almost identical to this. But the feature that they added here in the Vivor is these are typically used for incubating reptile eggs, and there are usually shelves in here. And I think what they found is that the temperature on the top shelf was probably different than the temperature on the bottom shelf. So they added this circulation fan up in the top here. And what that does is it keeps the air moving this way, so the top and bottom shelves are exactly at the same temperature. That's not really required for, for sourdough, but the way that they did that was by adding that unshrouded fan in there, which is probably great if you're a reptile egg, but if you're a homo sapien with 10 digits and you wanna keep them, I don't recommend using this device with that fan spinning. So, the simple solution, it's crazy that I even have to say this, I mean, I don't have to tell you, don't stick a knife in your toaster and don't put your hand on the stove if it's on, the simple solution is just turn it off before you open the door. Turn the power off, open the door, the fan stops spinning, put your dough in, take your dough out, turn it back on, it goes back to the prior setting. That's a perfectly safe way to use this device. But sometimes I get up in the morning, I haven't had my coffee yet, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, I go in there to check on my dough and I open that door with that fan still spinning. Don't do that, that's dangerous. So another option, this is what I'm doing with this. Is I went to my hardware store. I bought this for $3. This is called a four inch snap-in drain cover. You find this where the PVC plumbing is. I put three pieces of duct tape on here and I'm basically gonna duct tape this around that fan so that I create this plastic shroud around it. There it is. I now have a shrouded fan in my Vivor incubator. Test that out. It's freely spinning, working perfectly. That's another option. And then a few months ago when I thought I had seen everything, 
Roden Taylor, the company that made that original warm folding proofer, comes back on the scene with this little chub. Thermostatically controlled mini fridge warms and cools your sourdough starter, keeps it warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Dial in the temperature you want. There it is. Almost exactly like my little prototype from 2021, thermostatically controlled mini fridge. Almost had it guys, good job. However, I use mine as a bulk fermenter, not really for maintaining my sourdough starter. The only difference is I found a vessel that perfectly fit in here. So then you ask the question, Roden Taylor advertises this as a sourdough starter temperature control device. Can I use this as a bulk fermentation proofer? Sure can, just need to find the right size vessel. This is a flower vase I found. 1.5 liters, use the rule of three. That means I can make a 500 gram batch of dough in here and let that dough double. Boom, I just made this into a proofer for my bulk fermentation. Let's say I wanna go with something even larger. One loaf's not enough. I like to make two at a time. Here's another one, acrylic flower vase, 2400 milliliter capacity, divide that by three. That means I can mix up 800 grams of dough in here. That would be two 400 gram flour weight recipes. Look at that. That's about the maximum capacity I can get in here, 2.4 liter capacity. I can use this to bulk ferment two batches of dough, warm fermentation, cold fermentation. You just gotta find the right vessel. It'd be really nice if Broden Taylor actually made and sold a vessel made of food safe, BPA free acrylic with milliliter markers on it so I didn't have to put my blue tape on here that fit perfectly in here, which would be approximately five inches by seven and three eighths inches high. It'd be really nice if they sold something like this with this little sourdough home, that'd be really, really wonderful. This unit also has a fan that runs continuously. It's a fairly quiet fan. It's slightly higher pitched fan than some of the other ones. But again, I'm super sensitive to these noises. I mean, this is as quiet as a computer fan. Again, buy these if they have a good return policy, get it home, try it out, see if you like it. It's the only way you'll really know. Now, the last of these new warming and cooling products that we'll look at is this one called Goldie from Sour House. Goldie comes from the Goldilocks zone, 76 degrees to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, or 24.4 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is the optimal range for yeast growth. So this is not independently thermostatically controlled. You can't dial in your own temperature, but when you turn this warmer on, it'll basically warm up your sourdough starter and keep it within that temperature range. This is great for people who have a cold kitchen and your sourdough starter is really sluggish in the winter and you wanna speed it up. It'll basically keep it warm. Then I said it's also a warming and cooling device because they have this really innovative kind of low tech way to cool your starter is you turn the heater off and they sell these cooling pucks, that's P-U-C-K. It's basically a little freezer pack that you put in your freezer and with the heater off, you put these pucks on top of your starter and it'll basically cool that down pretty significantly. I've done some tests on this and this really works as a nice warmer and cooler for your sourdough. Once those pucks come up to room temperature though, you have to put them back in the freezer. So I actually have four of these instead of the one that they give you with the unit. You can buy a three pack and you can keep replacing these on top of your starter throughout the day if you wanna keep it colder than room temperature. You could do that in the summer if you didn't necessarily wanna put this into the refrigerator. Now, how do I use these cooling pucks? I mean, the, the warmer is pretty obvious. It warms up your starter. What I'll do is I'll make my starter when I'm getting ready to make a batch of dough. I'll put it on the warmer and I'll get it fired up so it rapidly rises. But if it rises and peaks before I'm ready to make the, the batch of dough, I'll turn the heater off. I put the cooling pucks on and that just puts it to sleep and it'll keep that starter from falling before I'm ready to use it in my dough. One of the other things I love about this product is the jar. You can buy these jars. They have a pint size or a quart size. This jar is made from borosilicate glass. That's the best quality glass that they use in laboratory equipment. There are no threads around the top of this, so it's super easy to keep that clean. I mean, compare that to this mess. 
where I screw this lid on and I get all that gunk around the top of my starter jar. That just does not happen with this jar. And it has the silicone, again, no threads on the lid. Put that silicone lid on there and it has this little band so you can measure where your starter uh, or, or origin point was and how much it's risen. This is just a fantastically designed starter jar. Even if you don't buy the unit, buy the jar. I really love these. Now for these two units, the IVYX Scientific 5 liter incubator, the Broden Taylor Sourdough Home, the manufacturers have done a great job. Thermostatically controlled, warm and cold temperature control chambers for sourdough starters or bulk fermentation, but they haven't finished the job because they haven't provided the bulk fermentation vessels, so you have to find your own. So in this section of the video, I've gone out and purchased a whole bunch of different vessels to see what fits and what works in here. I'm going to show those to you so that you don't go out and buy a lot of stuff that doesn't fit because it can add up in price if you're trying to buy multiple vessels. So for all these vessels I'm showing here, if they are generally available, I have the links on the products page of my website. So go to the, find the link for this unit and it'll have the links to the vessels in that same area. So first, if you're doing warm fermentation in this unit, say the tartine method, where you're doing stretching and folding during the bulk fermentation process, Normally, you'd want to use a low profile bowl like this, but this doesn't fit in here. So the best thing I've come up with are these 2.3 liter food storage containers. You can still do stretch and folds or coil folds. You can get your hand in here, get the dough out. It's not optimal, but it works. Then once that dough is done with the handling, you put it in here and you can continue to rise that up to 2.3 liters in volume. If you're planning on using this for warm bulk fermentation for the tartine method where you're doing the handling of the dough during bulk fermentation, you don't wanna use one of these tall vessels because you can't get the dough in and out of here. You'll just end up mauling the dough. So you wanna have a low profile unit like this. If you're doing overnight bulk fermentation at a cool temperature where you do most of your handling at room temperature, then you put the dough in here to keep the dough cool overnight. This is the best option that I have, 3.2 liters. A thousand grams of dough can double in volume here. It fits perfectly. This is an acrylic flour vase. I don't know if this is food safe. It's not marked as food safe, but it's made of acrylic, which is generally BPA free, but you're taking your own risks when you're using something without a food safe label on it. But I use this all the time and I'm a pretty risk averse guy. Next, if you don't want any plastic in your kitchen, Here's a glass flower vase, 2,100 milliliters, 2.1 liters. This fits perfectly in here. And lastly, this vessel, I don't have a link to this on the internet because this is kind of a DIY option that I did. I went down to Costco and you go to that aisle where they have the lifetime supply of gummy worms or Sour Patch Kids. And I got a giant vessel of those. Cut the top off of it, put these milliliter markers on here. This is the perfect size vessel. This is about three liters of volume. That means I can do a thousand gram weight of flour in here and that dough will double. I still have a little bit of headroom on the top if you could find a taller one. Now let's look at the Broden Taylor Sourdough Home. This is marketed as a sourdough starter temperature control device. Is there any reason you can't do bulk fermentation in here? Just gotta find the right vessel. This is a little bit smaller than the IVYX Scientific Incubator. That's a five liter interior capacity. This is 3.5 liter capacity. But when you really look at the practical capacity, you gotta find a vessel and see if it fits in here. This is the first one I started with, 1500 milliliters. Divide by three, that means I can mix up a 500 gram flour weight batch of dough that fits in here perfectly, and that dough can double in height. Now, if you're using any of these tall, thin vessels like this, it's very difficult to get your dough out of here the next morning after it's been bulk fermenting for 12 hours, I strongly recommend that you use a kitchen spray, nonstick oil, spray the inside of this before you put your dough in here. It's amazing your dough will come out very easily the next morning. This is a total game changer, whether you're using these devices or not. Start spraying your, your fermentation vessels. Your dough comes out so much more easily. Next, if you're doing that warm first stage of bulk fermentation where you're handling the dough, doing stretch and folds, you wanna have a low profile container. This is a 1.5 liter acrylic flour vase. Again, 500 gram batch of dough 
can double in volume in here using the rule of three. That's a really nice low profile vessel where I can get that in and out and I can get my dough out of here to do stretch and folds or coil folds if I needed to. Now let's say you wanna max out the capacity of this unit for bulk fermentation. A lot of people make a double batch, which is a thousand grams of flour using the rule of three. A thousand times three means I need a three liter vessel for that dough to double in volume. It can't do it. The largest vessel I can get in here is about 2,400 milliliters or 2.4 liters. It goes right up to the top. Now, if I divide 2.4 liters by three, that's 800 grams of flour. That's still two nice sized loaves. Not quite 500 grams each, but that's 400 grams each. However, this vessel is a custom made vessel. I cannot find anything off the shelf. What I did here was I took my large vessel from the IVYX incubator five by five by 10 inches and I cut about three inches off of the top of that to make this one five inches by five inches by seven inches. That's the perfect size for this unit. If you're listening, Broad and Taylor, it'd be really nice if you made something like this. I do not recommend attempting this at home. I cut this on a table saw. Cutting this acrylic or plastic is incredibly dangerous. This stuff can shatter and it's like shrapnel. If you're gonna do this, find somebody who's very experienced using power tools and has the appropriate safety equipment. I'm, I'm a little hesitant to even say that's how I did that. It's very unsafe. Lastly, if you say, I don't like all this plastic in my kitchen, is there a glass option? Absolutely. Five inch diameter by seven inch height. It's about 1800 milliliters. That gives you 600 gram flour weight. That's kind of an in-between flour weight, but that nice glass cylindrical vessel fits in there perfectly. Now the prices of some of these vessels can add up a little bit, especially if you're buying them online because you're pretty much paying for shipping. I mean, these can be 15 to $20 each, which is a little bit ridiculous. So go out to you know your local stores, take your tape measure with you, measure the inside dimensions of this and see if you can find something. Look what I found down at a local discount store. This is a, a water jug, I guess, wide mouth sports bottle. I just cut the top off of this. Look at this, two liter vessel fits perfectly in here. I spent $4.99 on this. This is a really nice capacity, really nice unit. I just happened to find this in a discount store. Now one last thing to note when you're thinking about fermentation vessels for these two units that use this little thermoelectric chip in here, the location of that chip that does the heating and the cooling is in the back of these. You can see where the four screws are. That's actually the heating and cooling element. So when you're thinking about putting your fermentation vessel in here, if you push your vessel right up against that back wall, it's right up against that heating unit if we're using it for warming purposes. And you can get a little hot spot in your dough. So what I try to do when I put the fermentation vessel in here is I cheat it more towards the front of the unit so that I'm creating a little air gap behind it. And if you notice that you're getting a little hot spot in your dough, you might want to rotate your fermentation vessel every hour or every two hours. I've only seen this happen once, so I can't say that it's a common problem, but it's just something to be aware of. So if you've been paying attention, you're probably asking yourself the question, where does this guy find a flower vase with milliliter markers on it? I made these myself. I'm gonna show you how to do this. You can create milliliter markers on any shape or size vessel. I recommend this in some of my other videos. If you're not measuring the percent rise in your dough, I don't know what you're doing. You're not making sourdough according to my methods. You always need to know what your starting volume is in milliliters and measure the percent rise. The way that I do that is I take any vessel of any shape or size, I put a piece of blue painter's tape down the side, I put the vessel on my scale, I zero it out. And now what I'm going to do is pour 100 grams of water into this vessel and then mark a line on the tape. Because in the metric system, 100 grams equals 100 milliliters. That's kind of cool the way they set up the system that way, but it's only for water. That's the only liquid where grams equals milliliters. It's based on the density or volume of water. So I pour this in, 100. Mark a line. 200. Mark a line. 200. So I'm at the top, I pour out my water. 
And now I have my 100 milliliter hash marks on the blue tape. I use my best penmanship that I learned in Catholic school. 2100 milliliters. Now I know the exact capacity of this and I have my milliliter markers on here. Now what you've seen I've done with some of these other ones is I put these transparent stickers on here. Basically you buy this clear sticker paper, put the numbers into a PowerPoint or a Word document, line it up with your tape, make sure that the document lines up with the lines, print those on your laser printer, put the sticker on there, and then you can run these through the dishwasher and those last a long time. This would be a great project for kids to do, to basically go through your whole kitchen and put milliliter markers on all the possible vessels that you might use for bulk fermentation. Be like a bulk fermentation vessel making party. I think that'd be really fun because you can also put this on any shape or size vessel. Like it doesn't have to be a straight sided vessel. I put these on my bowls as well because I like to do bulk fermentation in a bowl and you can't eyeball the percent rise in a bowl. It's, a, it's impossible, but you can put that blue tape on there and using that scale method, you can have a perfectly measured milliliter marker on any shape or size vessel. A couple other temperature control devices I'd like to show you are these warming mats. I have a few of these. This is called the Raisin Dough Razor from Relia Heat. It's a really nice, high quality mat. It's made of a super thin material. Basically, you plug this in. There's no thermostat setting on here, but this will get your starter or your dough up to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. So I'll typically use this if I'm taking my starter out of the refrigerator and I want to jump start it to, to get my starter ready for a batch of dough. I'll put it on this warming mat. You can also put a bowl on top of here and that would warm your bowl from the bottom, but it gets fairly hot at the bottom. So you want to be turning the dough occasionally or you'll overheat the bottom of it. But I've used this for many years with good luck just for kind of a general purpose warming mat. But you know me, I'm kind of obsessed with controlling temperature. So then I bought another mat that has this little wheel on it. It's not really a a digital thermostat, but you can turn up or down the warming temperature of this mat. It just, you just don't know what the temperature is. And if you really want super control of this or the Raisin warming mat, you can also buy a warming mat thermostat controller where you basically plug this in, you put the thermostat in your dough or in the bulk fermentation chamber that you're using or in your starter, and this will cut the power to this mat when it hits a certain temperature. So after I spent all that money on these warming mats and thermostatic controllers, a company finally came out and made what I believe to be the perfect sourdough warming mat. This is from a company called Cozy Bread. It's a nice large size mat and it has a digital thermostat built into it right there. So you specify what temperature you want to set this at. It warms up to that temperature, then it turns it off. Now this company recommends that you don't set this directly on a granite countertop. I have mine on the silicone mat. They actually recommend that you put this on a towel. Then put your dough on the mat and then fold up your towel over the top of it like this, like my towel from the fair city of Verona. And then this gives you a nice warm environment for your dough. But I'm always thinking of creative ways to use different devices that I buy. So as soon as I saw this with the thermostat controller on it, I remembered something I bought a couple of years ago. Watch this. Did I just make a Broden Taylor proofer for about $60? Kind of did. Now this is a public service announcement. With any of these temperature control devices, don't trust the thermostat setting. The only thing that matters to your dough or your starter is the actual temperature of the dough or the temperature of your starter, which may be different than the thermostat setting. So if you're following a sourdough recipe or process that says you want your dough temperature to be at 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius, and you push the button and set the thermostat setting at 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius, the center of the dough might never be at that temperature. And that's the only thing that matters for your sourdough. 
So in some of these, for example, I have to set the setting to 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius to maintain a dough temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. You'll find minor, minor variations with all these devices. So you always, always want to be testing your dough temperature and your starter temperature with a good thermometer. And then once you get that dialed in, once you do it a few times, you'll know for this certain device, I need to set the temperature higher than what I'm actually trying to hit, or I need to set it slightly lower than I need it to hit. Usually you need to set these thermostats higher than the target you're trying to hit to get the dough temperature up to that level. So before I went on this insane shopping spree and bought all of this equipment, I actually spent very little money on temperature control devices in my kitchen. So now I'm gonna share some of those ideas with you because there are many, many ways to control the temperature of your dough and your starter without spending a lot of money. Now for any of these low cost temperature control options to work, you are going to have to spend some money on a couple of thermometers. Get a good kitchen probe thermometer like this it's an indispensable tool for sourdough bakers. I'm constantly testing the temperature of my dough, my starter, and my baked loaves. You need to have one of these. Then you need a couple of these small ambient air temperature thermometers. This is called a refrigerator thermometer. You can get a four pack of these, they're very inexpensive. You want these little thermometers to travel with your dough when you're putting it in some type of proofing chamber so you know what the air temperature is around your dough. Here's a slightly upgraded version of it. This is a Bluetooth air temperature thermometer. I like these. I put these with my dough. So then I connect this to my phone and I don't need to be opening up my proofing chamber to, chest, to test the temperature. I can check the air temperature just by simply looking at my phone. The second thing that you need if you're creating a temperature control device is a cup of water. I have about 400 milliliters of water in here. You know what 400 milliliters of water is? It's a loaf of bread without the flour. This is exactly what your dough temperature will be if you put 400 milliliters of water into a proofing location. So the first one that we'll test, warming your dough. The oven with the light on, the old standby. Turn your oven light on, make sure the heat's off, put a thermometer in the oven, put your 400 milliliters of water in the oven, take the temperature every 30 minutes. That'll tell you exactly what your dough temperature will be. Some of the problems with using the oven with the light on method is that my oven will actually get up to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. That's way too warm for your dough. In my experience, you never want your dough or your starter to get above 87 degrees Fahrenheit or 31 degrees Celsius. Bad stuff starts to happen when your dough warms up to that temperature. It stimulates the protease enzyme. The dough becomes very acidic and it'll break down the gluten immediately. So any of these warming options, you wanna make sure that you're not overshooting your dough temperature. The second option is some ovens have a proof setting. My oven actually has two proof settings. One is a high proof setting, which gets up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius, way too warm for sourdough. But then it also has a low proof setting, which sits at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 degrees Celsius, perfect for sourdough. So check your oven to see if you have a proof setting, but before you put your dough in there, always do the water test with your thermometer to figure out what your dough temperature will get up to. If your oven with the light on is too warm or your oven with the proof setting is too warm, crack the door open and that'll let some of that warm air out. And you're sometimes able to moderate the inside temperature of your oven by just cracking the door open. Next option is the microwave with your light on. The way to turn the light on in your microwave is to leave the door ajar. Again, put a thermometer in there. Your dough should always travel with a thermometer and you can test it out by putting a cup of water in there for a couple of hours. Third option, some fancy kitchens have a warming drawer. I have a warming drawer down here. Now this warming drawer has a proof setting on it. That proof setting is at 120 degrees, too warm for sourdough. So if I set this at the lowest setting, my warming drawer is still too warm for sourdough bulk fermentation. But if I leave the drawer slightly open, and I put a thermometer in there, I can moderate that temperature to get it down to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. So those are some of the most common options that you'll find in your kitchen. A couple other things that you can do. If none of those options work, some people don't have a light bulb in their oven or they have an LED light which doesn't throw off much heat. 
Another option is to fill up this vessel with one liter of water, put this in the microwave and bring this to a boil. Then put this in the oven with your dough and this essentially creates a heating element. The heat from the boiled water will heat up the oven. Always put it in there with your thermometer so you know what the ambient temperature is. That creates a nice warm humid environment for your dough and then you occasionally need to refresh this, take it out every couple of hours, put it back in the microwave, heat it up again. If it heats up your oven too high, use half as much water, use a half a liter of water. So by controlling the amount of water, boiling water that you put in that enclosed space, it controls the amount of change in the temperature based on that volume of water. We talked about using the light bulb in your oven or the microwave. You can also just buy a freestanding light bulb. This is something called a salt lamp bulb. I believe these are 20 watt bulbs. They're a little bit warmer, throw off a little more heat than the small night light bulbs, but they're not as warm as a 40 watt bulb, for example. You wanna put your dough in close proximity to that. You wanna put your Bluetooth thermometer near your dough and then put that in an enclosed space. Now, danger, anytime you put a light bulb in an enclosed space, you're creating a fire hazard. That's why I always put that thermometer in there with that. You wanna make sure that you test this out a couple times and do not leave this unattended until you have a mechanism that you know works. Then by having that little Bluetooth thermometer in there, you don't need to get up and check the temperature of this all the time. You can be sitting on the couch watching Jeopardy and you know what the ambient air temperature is in your little makeshift proofing chamber. That works. We already talked about inexpensive warming mats, seed warming mats, reptile warming mats, incredibly inexpensive. I recommend finding one that has the thermostat on it or you can buy that external thermostat controller for it. Another option I've seen people do, I don't have one of these, is but if you have a sous vide device that basically you can use as an immersion water bath method of cooking, fill this with water, put your sous vide stick in here, and then float your bowl of dough in the water, it'll keep your dough at a very, very consistent temperature. Those sous vide sticks are incredibly accurate. That's a good way to maintain your dough temperature. Another option for keeping your starter warm or cool is that I've seen, I don't own one, but I've seen these little coffee cup warming pads. You've seen these in people's offices in the past where they put a cup of coffee on there and it sits there for like six hours and it smells like burnt coffee and they never wash out their cup. They make those now so that they can warm or cool. And I've seen one with a thermostat controller on it. That would be perfect for keeping your sourdough starter warm or cool on a very, very small little footprint, but I haven't tested those yet. Now let's talk about inexpensive cooling options. One option, I did this in the summer in the past, is when I'm trying to bulk ferment my dough overnight, my kitchen's 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius at night, and I wanna get that dough temperature down to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, I put my dough in my oven with the heat off and the light off with an ice pack. This will actually keep your dough temperature down almost 10 degrees Fahrenheit or five degrees Celsius for a long time long enough to let that dough get a later start to fermenting. It'll eventually come back up towards room temperature in the morning, but it's basically like a delayed start method that really works. I strongly recommend looking into that. Some people also will just use a, a cooler and put ice packs in a cooler with their dough to keep it cool overnight. And again, as that ice melts overnight, then the dough warms up. So it's like a delayed start method if you're trying to slow down your bulk fermentation. Similarly, this is a great idea I came up with a couple months ago where let's say you wanna mix your dough in the evening, but you wanna feed your starter in the morning so that it's ready to go in the evening when you get home from work. But if I leave my starter out for eight or nine or 10 hours, it'll peak and fall by the time I get home from work. So I need to keep my starter cool during the day so that it doesn't peak and fall before I get home. What I do is I basically feed my starter in the morning then I stick my fed starter in a bowl of ice and I leave it on the countertop and I leave for the day. So what happens is this will cool down your starter so that it won't start fermenting for about four hours. Then as the ice melts, the water comes up to room temperature. Let's say you do this eight o'clock in the morning. By about noon, everything in here is back up to about room temperature. That's exactly like feeding your starter at noon. So then in four, five, six hours, my starter is peaking right as I'm getting home from work at the end of the day, even though I fed it in the morning. So again, using the ice as a delayed start mechanism for the fermentation, either of your dough or your starter. 
So another option for cooling your dough that a lot of people don't think about, but a lot of people have these, is a wine fridge. Now th think about it, this is where you want your dough to be colder than room temperature, but warmer than refrigerator temperature. That's what a wine refrigerator is. A and that temperature range of 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, between 12 degrees Celsius up to about 16 degrees Celsius, is a perfect temperature for long fermentation of your dough. And that's where it helps you dial in the timing of your bulk fermentation with your schedule. And the last option for cooling your dough, some people have recommended this, is something called a power cooler. These are real popular now where you can plug these into your car or you can plug them into a AC electrical outlet. And it's basically a cooler where you can dial in with a thermostat what temperature you want that to be at. You could bulk ferment your dough at cool temperatures, especially in the summer, using a power cooler. We've covered a lot of ground in this video, but I just want to recap that these products that we saw here, this is really the first generation of what I believe is a revolution in sourdough home baking. The ability to use these new devices, these warming and cooling devices, to precisely dial in your dough temperature, warmer than room temperature or colder than room temperature, and to combine that with things like these fermentation timetables that I've created, these are on my website, you can see what this does. It allows you to dial in your sourdough schedule to work with your schedule. Because when you control temperature, you control time. That's how sourdough works. The reason so many people quit baking sourdough is because they can't fit it into their schedule. This is the solution to get sourdough baking back into busy people's schedules. Now, if I could fast forward into the future and say, what would I like a device like this to look like? I'd love to see a silent running countertop unit. That device would be connected to an app that would help me plan my bake around a busy schedule. I would say Wednesday night, I have a little time to mix the dough. Thursday night, I have a little time to shape the dough. I wanna bake a loaf on Friday for dinner. What should I do? The app will come back and say, mix the dough at 8 p.m. on Wednesday at this specific dough temperature using this specific amount of starter from something like these fermentation timetables. It'll tell you what temperature to set your proofer at, put your bulk fermenting dough in the proofer, come back 23 hours later, shape the dough, put the dough into the refrigerator, Friday night, bake the dough. It'll basically help you plan your sourdough schedule around a busy person's schedule. It's the future of sourdough baking. You saw it here first. Thanks for sticking with me on this long video and good luck on your sourdough journey.